Welcome to a tutorial video on BitC8. In this video, I'm going to talk about endings and the end action. So previously we looked at exits. We have one-way exits and two-way exits. We can move between sections of a game, or what BitC calls rooms. And we've previously seen how we can use the exits and endings tool, available to us as part of the room tool right here, and we can pop it out and add exits, which is our ability to move between different rooms. There's also something called endings, which is not something I've covered in a previous video. So let's talk a little bit about endings, and then we'll talk about a room action for creating an ending if we want. So let's go ahead and using the exits and ending tool, I'm going to click plus and then an ending right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click move here and move it over to this corner and notice ending dialog, the end. So let's just go ahead and play this so we can see it in action. So remember, our ending is going to be in this corner up here. So as soon as I interact with that corner, the end, and the game's over, and I can't do anything else. So an ending is very literally an ending. It game ends. It ends abruptly, it shows some type of dialogue, and then it ends. Potentially, we can use the dialogue tool and add some more dialogue right here, potentially dialogue actions and other things, other keep in mind, once it's over, it ends. So that explains what an ending is. We want to create some type of ending for an experience, the end of a maze, the end of interactions, whatever. We can also, through the dialogue tool, create a room action such that the game also ends. And this is important as we talk about endings. So let's go ahead and delete this right here. I don't want an ending right here. And I'm going to close this tool. So instead, what I'm going to click on, and I'll go ahead and uh, click on item over here and swap this out. So I want dialog for the T item right or the T item right here. So what I'm going to do is for T, go ahead and drop a T into the room uh, for item. And then oh there we go. Make sure I'm in paint mode. Okay. And so the issue there I was in excess endings. Make sure we're over here in paint mode. And then what I want to do is click on add and down to room actions. And we've previously seen how we can add things like lock and unlocking. We previously visited palette. Now let's look at end. Stop the game. You found a nice warm cup of tea. Stop the game. Notice the game stops immediately, but if there is dialogue after this action, it will still play. So let's go ahead and do that. So we will see this dialogue. And then when it ends, that's it. Notice it disappeared right here. It ended the game when it got through this and then ended the game, stops the game immediately. In both cases, we can either place, if we want, an ending within a room, such that as the avatar interacts with that tile, game ends. We can show some type of ending dialogue. Alternatively, we can have a little more control over it. So if we want, we can use the room action end to create an ending. And we can also base it on, as we've seen with other room actions, potentially some type of branching list. So if we want to set up something such that, and I'll go ahead and remove this from a dialogue over here, we have a list, a branching list, and we can, tech, we can check something that is. Check the value of an item, check the value of a variable, and then as a result of that, if I click in here, we can add room action end. So potentially once everything's been collected or once all dialogue has been shown or if the player is sure they want to do that as part of interacting with some part of a room, a sprite, an item, we can then cue the stop the game right here. In both cases, remember, the game stops immediately. There's no going back. The game's over. So for the player to play again, they have to refresh the web page or otherwise revisit it somehow. So when the game ends, it ends. So let me review quite what I've talked about in this video. So we have endings which we can add through exits and endings down here as part of the room tool. It's its own separate tool. And these are endings that we can add plus and ending. And we can place them within a room if we would like to go that route. Alternatively, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. We can, using the dialog tool in room actions, add also an ending through add room action end and it will end the game. In both cases, the game ends immediately. More dialogue might be shown, but once it's over, it's over, and the player, in looking at the game, has to refresh the web page. 
or take some other action to get back into it. So keep that in mind. But in both cases, endings and the end action, both things end the game. That's the end of some type of bitsy experience as set up in that way. So as we're working through the different room actions that we have available as part of interactions within Bitsy 8, keep in mind one of them might be to end the game. We can add endings, we can use the end action, both of which of course are available to us within Bitsy 8. Thanks for watching.